Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Halfway Over After Etc. and I am back with another resin tutorial. So today I'm actually working on a little marquee sign that I found at Michael's. It is adorable. It is gold with a pink background and it is going to be perfect for your wall or as a decor piece. I may or may not be giving this one to a friend of mine for her baby's nursery later today. So let's get this video started. <laughs> Since we already have a piece, our actual sign, I've linked to a few similar ones on Amazon if you can't find this exact one. But since we already have our sign, we don't really need to start with making a mold. We already have our mold. So what you're going to need is you're going to need 100% silicone caulk to seal up any gaps in the back of your sign. You're going to need resin. You're going to need your colorants. I use the same ones I always use for projects like these. Blush, rose gold, white, clear with rose gold flakes. What is the last one? I do them the same every time. Blush, white, rose gold, oh, and copper, of course. All right, so you're gonna need those colorants. I've linked all of that down below. You need your safety gear, okay? So you need gloves, you need a respirator, you need goggles, trust me, you do. Silicone cups, stir sticks, your trusty heat gun. I think my heat gun has about 12 million years of resin on it this time. That's okay, they still work perfectly for what we need. And we're gonna get started. This is actually a really quick and easy project, even though we are going to do two layers. The other thing you need is beads. I've used pearls, I've used small rocks, I've used small gems, I've used small pieces of crushed glass. You guys, it turns out so pretty, I cannot wait for you to see. So without further ado, let's jump in, put your gloves on, get your respirator ready. We're gonna make this thing. Okay guys, so we're gonna start by mixing all our resin. We have all our different colors. They've been sitting in the cups for a minute or two and we're just gonna pass that um, heat gun, our heat gun over tops, pop any of those little micro bubbles. Since this is a fairly shallow pour into this piece, th the bubbles pretty much pop themselves, but it's easier the less bubbles there are, so pop everything we've got all our colors from left to right we've got the white we've got the blush we've got the rose gold glitter we have our interference violet we have our white with the rose gold flakes and on the end we have the copper there we go so i'm just going to show you real quick what i used for everything the interference color is a color shifting pigment and it is beautiful in this piece so now we're going to start pouring. So you just want to start with your base colors. And by base colors, I mean your solids and your clear with the rose gold flakes in it. Those are the colors that you're going to kind of pour larger sections of and are going to make the base colors to put your actual rocks and your geode areas in. So I tend to like to do things in threes or in triangle sections. Since this isn't a silicone mold, if we have any drips, we need to make sure to clean them up, okay? And finish off the white. So it doesn't have to be perfectly filled. Like I said, the, the resin will spread out the more we add. And we'll go in with our little stir stick and spread it around. But... We do want to go ahead and add resin everywhere that we want it. And for the most part, we're going to go ahead and fill up the base of our whole background, the whole hello sign with the three base colors. And then we'll come back in with the other three colors and add highlights and little veins in the geode portion and all those fun things. So there's not really a science to this. I like to add, like I said, in, in threes for your first layer. So see how I did the white in the bottom left, top, middle, and bottom right? That gives it a triangular effect. And now I'm going to come in and just work in the next areas so that you're not putting blush right next to blush or white right next to white. And then we'll fill in the rest of our areas that are left with our 
clear with the rose gold flakes. Oh, got another drop. You just use a paper towel and clean it up. Perfect. Now we're going to fill this bad boy in. I just love those rose gold flakes. Of course, they do tend to clump up. So that's why when you're stirring, you want to make sure to really make them like cut them apart as much as possible and make them small. The smaller they are in your cup, the more they'll spread out in the actual piece and kind of take up the most space. All right, we're going to do this whole L. It's going to be glorious. At least I think it will be glorious. You can make your own decisions. Perfect. Now we are all done. We used pretty much all of that. We're just going to come back and we're going to make sure that that resin is filling in the entire base layer. So just go ahead and spread it out. You can use your gloved finger if you want, or you can use a stir stick, but you just want to push it out. Okay. And for some reason I didn't do the bottom of the L there. I don't think I ever fix that on camera. I go back and fix it later, but I don't think I ever fix it on camera. So when you're doing a piece, it's really easy, especially a big piece like this, unless you're like directly over top of it, it's hard to see all those little bottom areas. See how everything I missed is on the bottom. Now, most of that gets fixed as I add more colors, but really watch that. So this is that interference violet color and you can see like it take hi lily my cat came to help us Come on. okay it really shines when you add it to the piece so even when you add it to the white or the blush it just takes on this really pretty like luminescent kind of tone and so for the most part i'm adding it to the white here and this is the interference violet it I don't have an interference pink, but the violet is, is pretty darn good. So now we're going to go in with the glitter and we're going to do this with the stir stick instead of pouring from the cup because I really want thinner lines and we're just going to add it kind of in between where big areas meet. So where the white and the pink meet or where some of those rock areas might be. There's not a science to this either. You just kind of think of where highlights might be on a piece. Like if the sun hits it, that's kind of where you want to add your pieces. And to me, it always looks a little funny until you hit it with the heat gun and kind of spread it out a little bit. It looks stringy, which is not really what we're going for. You guys hear my cat purring because now she's purring right into the microphone. She just loves this piece so much. All right, so now we're going to do the copper, and I always add the copper. Oh, Lily. Okay, sorry guys, she is just too much. We're going to add the copper right on top of that rose gold glitter. So it all kind of goes together, and it merges, and it's... It's just so pretty. I love the copper. Once it's dried, it has this beautiful metallic and it really spreads out. It looks amazing. All right. And for this piece, we're going to add our clear and pearls and our rocks and all of those different pieces to those white areas. So the bottom of the H, the top of that L and the bottom of the O. Perfect. So now we're going to use our heat gun and I just like to go over all of those um, darker colors until they spread out a bit and blend with these surrounding colors. You kind of move them around with your heat gun a little bit till they look more swirly and less stringy. You also want to go over just the entire surface area. Make sure you pop any bubbles that have risen to the surface or are left in the piece because... We don't need bubbles in this. It is such a pretty piece. So you can see how I'm just literally pushing the resin apart with the heat gun and that just helps it blend in and look less stringy. Perfect. Looks better already. All right. 
halfway done. Just keep pushing that resin. I have my little um, heat gun. And you guys always ask which one this is. This is the Wagner HT400. And somebody asked the other day, they said they're on a budget. And do I have a better alternative for a heat gun on a budget? But guys, this little guy is like $23. He's pretty inexpensive. So that would be my recommendation. I like this one. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to save this pearl from the blush, add it right back in. I, these pearls went everywhere. I was finding them on my uh, porch days later. But I'm only going to add pearls to this bottom layer because they're the biggest, and I want them to sink a little further down in the piece than if I add them to the top layer of the resin. So go ahead. We're just going to add the pearls to those three areas, the bottom of the H, the top of the L, and the bottom of the O. And you don't necessarily need to use your, <laughs> see those pearls? Maybe it's because I'm uncoordinated. You can use your stir stick to move them around if they don't fall in quite the right area, or if they fall on top of each other, you definitely want them to be in one layer. You don't want them to be on top of each other. And just keep adding them until you kind of like the base look. Lily, she is just in love with this piece today, you guys. She's actually just upset because it's raining outside and she can't be sunbathing on the porch. I'm going to pretend it's because she wants to hang out with me. All right, so now we're going to add the pearls to the right. Once we've added all the pearls and we're happy with how this looks, we will cover it up and let it cure for about five to six hours. I just put some cardboard over the top of the piece to keep cat hair out or flies or there we go. Now, five to six hours later, we're ready to add the crushed glass. You can see I did fix that bottom of the L, just not on camera. These are all the pieces I'm going to use. And we're going to start by adding clear resin to the entire piece. I have it in the, in the blog post. I think this is three or 400 milliliters of resin. I don't remember off the top of my head, but if you go over to the blog post, I have all of the measurements for you. All right. So now I am literally just going to use my finger instead of the stir stick because it's a little harder to see clear resin, how it spreads out. And I want to make sure that it is a down in every little piece of the mold, but B, I want to make sure it's around all of those pearls, which is a little harder to do with the stir stick. So we're, we're literally, we're just pushing it into all the little, all the little pieces of, of this mold of this sign. We want it to spread itself out and it's okay if it, doesn't look perfect right after you've smoothed it out. Once it settles, it will fill in those areas. It just needs to touch them. There we go. Resin is like a two-year-old. Once it touches something, it owns it and it will spread out and fill that space. It's like, nope, this is mine now. My cat is purring into the microphone again. Can you guys hear her? You probably can't probably just think I'm a crazy cat lady. All right. We are getting close to the end. So once we finish spreading out all the clear resin and you can see on the O and that second L it's already started to, to spread out and just be smooth all the way across there. Oh, speak of the devil. There she is. I normally lock her in the house, but she must have gotten out at this point. She, I'm telling you, she loves me. <laughs> Once we get done spreading out all the resin, we'll start to add our stones. I showed you all of the ones we're using, but essentially we're using a dark rose gold stone. That's just the clear stones that I tinted with our copper paint that we used in the first layer of this. Then the clear and the pink stones, we used a mirrored glass that's pink. And I think that's about it. Go ahead and pop any bubbles. This also has the added effect of heating up your resin, which helps it settle out a little better. 
You don't need it too much on this layer for settling out, but you definitely want to pop any bubbles since this is clear. Clear resin will show all the bubbles. Perfect. Now we're going to start with our darkest stones. And for us, that is that dark rose gold stones that we made with the copper paint. And we're just going to put them everywhere all along those areas so all the way up on the H all the way down on the L and all the way around on the O we're gonna build up these areas quite a bit so <coughs> you don't need too much of each one now we're going to go in with these little rocks these don't show up as well in the resin as some of the mirrored pieces or the rose gold but they look beautiful in the resin. And especially since these rocks are going to stick out of the resin, they're beautiful to add. They just add shimmer, shimmer and glass. That's what we want. All right. So when I use the stir stick, I'm literally just like pushing the rocks down. They don't need to necessarily all be even or anything like that but we need them all to be touching the resin. If they're not touching the resin, then they won't stay. And even doing that, when I turn this baby over, when it's finally dry, a few pieces will fall off. That's just the nature of so many stones and that's okay. But we want most of them to be down. And I always take off my gloves to do the rocks, mainly because the gloves are perfect for protecting your hands from resin, but I have a hard time feeling the rocks well enough to put them in with the gloves on. These are little gems. Again, they don't show up as well in the clear resin, but they just add so much sparkle. And especially when they like stick up out of the resin, you can see that gem shape. It's so pretty. But make sure if you're doing anything touching the resin, you wear gloves, guys. Like, you don't want it on your skin. I only have bare hands when I'm touching the rocks, okay? There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and cover this up with our cardboard. Now we're going to leave it for 24 hours to cure, and then we'll be done. All right, ready to see the finished project? <laughs> I love it. You guys want a close-up? Of course you do. All right. Oh, it's getting shadowy. So I will put some really pretty close up pictures below so you can truly see my face is in the shadows. Exactly what it looks like. I love how this turned out like the rock layers with those pearls. I really want to keep it, but let's be honest. I have 50 million resin projects and this would be perfect for my friend's new nursery. So goodbye little sign. I hope you have a good life. I'm going to go package her up now and send her off to live with my friend and her new baby girl where I'm sure she will have a beautiful life. I'm so excited to see her face when I give her this. If you guys liked this project, I hope you make one of your own. Of course, you don't have to make it say hello. Whatever sign you find can be your own little marquee sign. Leave a comment down below if you liked the video, and I will see you next time. Bye.